here. Okay, so welcome everybody to tonight's Legends Call. Uh, I'm really excited about um, tonight's call in that I don't know if anybody else thinks this way or does things this way. So I thought I would kind of um, go back and revisit this morning's call and kind of tap into it from a different philosophy, if, if you will, right? And uh, I'm so glad Bill Gross is on here, by the way. If you guys are not connected to Bill Gross, I'm one of the best realtors in all of uh, California. I, oh, I love that. He is our uh, Los Angeles probate guy. And uh, if there is anybody that knows the inner workings of how the probate system works here in California, it is Bill Gross. Uh, just a huge shout out to Bill. Um, and one of the reasons why this is kind of a really powerful um, kind of opening is that I know that what Bill does is kind of what we're going to talk about uh, talk about tonight. So it's kind of an opening here. So uh, first off, this is my. Uh, you will get um, if and if anybody is sick and tired of Joe talking about the birthdays, uh, that is fantastic. You are going to get really sick and tired of me talking about the cruise, uh, and just until April, and then you won't have to hear about it until we start going on the second one. Um, but if you have not yet uh, heard, we are doing a Mailbox Power Cruise. It is the last week of April, going out of Los Angeles. We're going down to Cabo. We're going to watch some whales. We're going to have food together. We're going to dine together. We're going to have fun together. We're going to tour the countryside together, and we would love to have you be a part of it. So uh, if you have not yet uh, secured your cabin or had a conversation with Shanta, just reach out to her, and uh, she'll get you taken care of. I know there's already a list of... Um, people that uh, need roommates or want to travel with other people and they've got some roommate things like ladies only want to stay with ladies and guys only want to get all of that stuff is handled by Shanta just put it into her um, uh, and she'll she will uh, she will totally take care of you okay so um, this morning this morning we did a call that in my opinion was one of the best Monday morning calls we've done and that is, we took a, uh, a client of Mailbox Power and we helped her um, utilize her Mailbox Power platform. And the, the persona we used this morning was a gal who was trying to get booked on 50 podcasts in 2022 and wanted to figure out how to use her pro, I'm sorry, her executive membership in Mailbox Power to help get her booked on a total of 50 uh, podcasts over the year. So I will get that video posted. I'm going to post it literally as soon as we wrap out of here tonight. Uh, I will quickly have to change and get to a stupid, I mean, amazing holiday party before I leave. Um, you know, when you haven't packed yet and you're leaving early in the morning, the last thing you really want to do is go to a holiday party. Uh, but, you know, it's a white elephant gift. And I did, I am taking a uh, unicorn paper mache uh, arts and crafts kit as the, uh, as my, uh, as my white elephant gift this morning. I'm quite excited about it. So, um, okay, so I really want to open a conversation and uh, there's, I only have a couple of things I want to share, but I want to share a philosophy with you that I think if you use this going into a sales conversation about mailbox power, I think we might increase the likelihood that somebody says yes. Okay, and so here it is. I think a lot of folks, when they go start having conversation with prospects um, or people that are not yet customers in Mailbox Power, one of the things that tends to happen is we go into that sales conversation with the sale on our mind. And our goal is to obviously close that sale or have them sign up. And I agree with that 100%. But I've always found, for myself anyways, that when I go into a sales conversation, if I only make it about the product, good, or service that I'm selling right in front of me, the person on the other end, a lot of times, will see us as a sales rep, okay? And we know that people don't like to be sold, but wow, they love to buy, right? So when I look at a, a sales conversation, I am going to kind of hope to expand how we think about it. And we're going to talk about this morning's call just in particular because uh, this, this gal is certainly on my mind. And that is this. And this is why I said I, I think Bill is so fantastic at what he does. And that is if you can position yourself as a resource, 
you have a much higher likelihood that somebody says yes. So tonight's sort of concept is walking into a sales conversation, but instead of just walking in with the one little tool in your hand of a mailbox power account, is how can you be a resource? What can we do? How can we expand their conversation? How can we expand what they're doing in order to um, allow them to believe and think and know in their heart that we are a valued resource for them, not just trying to sell them a mailbox power account, okay? And so I've pulled up three different things uh, that we'll share in a, in a second here. Tagging into what we talked about this morning, I wanted to open up the conversation and just kind of say, hey, look, are we trying to add being a resource to what we're doing in the sales process? And what could we do given this morning's persona how could we have walked into that conversation perhaps being positioned as a resource be, versus being positioned as a mailbox power affiliate? So I want to just open that conversation up and see what your guys' thoughts are on it. Have you any idea on how you might walk into her from this morning? And if I have, um, let me see, I have my notes literally right here. Um, I'll read through the persona since some of you were not on this morning's call, just so you kind of have an idea of who we helped out this morning. We helped a gal who was trying to get booked on 50 podcasts in 2022. She is a really good guest, so we don't have to worry about her um, being an amateur guest. She's a really good guest. She used to do a bunch of podcasts way back in the past, a couple of years ago, and got lazy and got out of kind of the tune of follow up and staying in touch with those podcasters. When she's on a podcast, she usually turns that into two or three additional podcasts because she is so good. Uh, she generates referrals off of them. About one out of 10 hosts that she's on um, becomes a super fan. And she does not have her own podcast at the time. She does have a, a pretty small uh, email list. She has a pretty good social media uh, presence. And she has lots and lots of contacts. And that she estimates that every podcast that she's on ultimately res, um, is responsible for between $500 and $1,000 in revenue to her business, okay? So in her head, just in talking to her, if each podcast is $1,000 to her business, she's looking at adding $50,000 to her business by getting on 50 podcasts in 2022. And we gave some amazing, I mean, this morning's ideas were, uh, some of them were absolutely clever and interesting and exciting, and I loved them. So now I want to peel back and go, okay, now we're going to go sell mailbox power to her. She's already an executive uh, member, so she's kind of off the table. But how could we position ourselves as a resource to her versus just somebody trying to sell her mailbox power? Any thoughts? Oh, and the reason, by the way, I, I kept, kept bringing in Bill. The reason Bill, I think, is really great at this is when Bill does a deal in real estate, even though he is a realtor and even though he is with EXP and even though he has all the same tools that every other realtor has, he has really positioned himself as a valuable resource to somebody going through the probate process. And therefore that's an added value. This is why he can basically snap his fingers and create deals out of thin air because he has positioned himself as a very valuable resource to folks going through that process, right? So that's what sets him aside. That's why he's one of the top in uh, top folks in the country. So um, I want to open this up. Go, how can we be a resource to this gal looking to grow her podcast guesting portfolio? I don't know if that's the right word for it. <laughs> so Debbie. So I wasn't on this morning's call. <clears throat> so um, this may be a repeat of what somebody else has said. But um, if you want, if you're looking to be a resource for her, um, I think doing some research about um, podcasts that have a great audience, really wide audience, and um, and connecting her with people that you know that do podcasts would be a great idea. And <clears throat> maybe, you know, it, it's that whole six degrees of separation. Um, maybe somebody you know knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who books Gary V's podcast. I mean, 
you know, it just takes a, a little bit of uh, kind of reaching out to find somebody who could really make a difference. So I think that's a, an important part of being a resource. Okay, awesome, awesome. Andrea. The way that I would uh, first approach her, if she's not a, you know, you said she's not a user, but what I do with um, Mailbox Power or um, BNI is, who does she get her best referrals from? And that's where I would uh, start the uh, the conversation is how does she find that? And, you know, at that point, learn what her podcast topic is. What does she specialize in? So that I would know how to send her. And then I would go to the uh, the mailing list and build her an awesome mailing list around that topic. Okay, so great. So we would we would maybe go in and build her a list, a mailing list of potential people if we could figure it out inside that mailing list. Um, and Andrea, would you do that after she signs up, before she signs up, during the sign up process? When would you do that? I would do it during, not necessarily built. I would show her the option to do it because I think that that is something so unique that we have available at such a reasonable cost that during my presentation and during that first conversation with her, let her know the why of what uh, we have available for her, not necessarily the, the selling of it, but why she should uh, try it out. Okay, okay, awesome. Debbie, did you, uh, you, you kind of went hand up hand, you're just sliding, you're like, oh, I don't know whether I'm gonna talk, and then you think that I'm not gonna call you. Sorry, actually, Debbie Morrow kind of said it. It was being a resource from the perspective of making introductions to other podcasters. Um, I'm a little confused on the question. Are we trying to get her, are we trying to be a resource for her or are we trying to get her to use Mailbox Power? I was a little confused by the question. Okay, so this morning we talked about how to get, how to have her use the system. She's already a customer, okay. how to use her. But I wanted to use her as a great example because it was just it's it's an easy one for me. Um, frankly, it was an easy one for me, and I think it could be translated. So let's pretend that she is not a customer, and we're going to go in. And the idea is: is there anything that we could do to position ourselves not just as a sales rep for Mailbox Power, but actually as a resource? As a resource. Okay. So I'm sorry if I was uh, I was. It's okay. Foggy and misty eyed. I need a nap. And I'm dreaming of taco time. Uh, yeah, Debbie. So um, in amongst the research that we're doing to find her podcasts <clears throat> to be on, um, I think that um, we should show her how and encourage her to send what we used to call banner bombs to those people so that when she makes the phone call and says, hey, I'd be, I'm would be i interested in being a guest on your podcast, they already know who she is as soon as she says her name. Um, so, you know, it's the, the getting your foot in the door and making them like you before they know you. Okay, okay, awesome. Mr. Bill Gross. Well, the, the obvious thing, having, having worked with you now for not even a year, would be to talk to her about the importance of creating her own podcast, to invite the people she's been on as her guests, because they do that. At the end of that, when you have the post, thank you, everybody's all happy, say, hey, I'm curious, I'm looking to get out a little bit more, who else should I contact to be on their podcast? Who do you know that you've been on besides me that would be helpful? And I, I think, you know, I would invite her to one of your programs. I'm not sure what, what the right step is. I'd, I'd probably uh, text you and say, where the hell should I send her? But to the, the, the um, you know, you took us through the steps of creating our own video uh, YouTube channel and podcasts. And I would, at this point, having done it now, I think I know enough and I've been launching other people, helping them in their business. And I'm indispensable to them because they need me to help them launch and run their channels. Awesome. And yeah. by the way, a guy from the last call at Mailbox Power, and she has a built-in sponsor for her podcast, Mailbox Power, brought to you by Mailbox Power. 
Absolutely. If you're similar to how, click here and find out. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, Bill. Debbie. So one of the things that podcasters want the most of is more listeners. So as a resource for getting on to the shows, we could show her how the, the guests that she's, um, the, the podcast that she's trying to get onto, how, as, as a resource, we could show them how she could help to promote the shows to her audience, to the people that she knows using Mailbox Power. And that's where sending out a postcard to the people that she knows to provide a QR code to the new, um, you know, the, that episode. So she's she's promoting the use of the interview through Mailbox Power, and that's that's how we're being a resource to her is showing her how she can help them through Mailbox Power. Is that kind of what yeah. you're looking for? Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just looking for a bunch of ideas kind of being thrown in here. Because one of the things I think that comes out of these calls when we kind of put a bunch of ideas in is that people start to think about things a little bit, a little bit differently, right? And so I'll tell you, so far, nobody's hit on the thing that, that I in my head um, was going to do, but I've got that uh, behind the screen. I'll share my screen and show you guys, at least from one perspective, a couple of things I, I, I would do. But I'm loving this. This is great. And and by the way, these are just my opinions. They're not they're not uh, super fact. So uh, let's go, Debbie, and then Dan from Toronto. So, <clears throat> what about um, figuring out what is similar to a podcast and um, exploring the opportunities that might be there, um, whether that's um, a radio interview or, you know. Um, I don't, I guess YouTube is kind of a virtual, a, a visual podcast, but, you know, other options that are similar to podcasts. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Dan. So you mentioned, <clears throat> sorry, you mentioned that she has lots of contacts. So one of the things I would want to do is have a discussion with her about the type of contacts she has how much, uh, how current they are. And as a resource for her, I can show her through the mailbox power system, how we can either revive some of those people. Maybe we should have a discussion of what the earnings per, per contact could be if we were to, to revive some of those contacts and get them into her podcast. And I could show her how to do all that very effectively and cost effectively using the mailbox power system in our 200 cards a month. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so this is just open. This is still, this is still a full blown open discussion. So I want to, I, I want to just go through kind of my process or what I, what I would do. It doesn't make it good, bad, wrong, right, indifferent. It's just, this is kind of how my brain went. Um, the thing that I picked up on in this persona when we were talking was a um, couple of things. Uh, when she gets on one podcast, it usually turns into two or three. Um, and this one was the thing that I hit on uh, quite heavily. And that is that she estimates that each podcast is approximately $1,000 in revenue to her business over the long haul, right? So when I hear that, what my brain goes to is, well, if she's trying to get on 50 podcasts in a year, why don't I see how many podcasts I can book her on myself? Because if I can book her on a podcast and that results in $1,000 to her in income and she doesn't really have to do anything, is there a high likelihood that she's now going to look at me as like, I'm her new BFF, right? So what I did was before this, I'm going to share my screen right here. So I, I'll lose some of you for just a second. Um, number one, I just went to YouTube. One way that I could be a resource to her, or we could be a resource to her, is I just went to YouTube and typed in how to get booked on a podcast, right? So I just went down here and looked, and you know, here is here is 30 podcasts in 30 days, a challenge, right? So this video is 21 minutes. 
if I were um, going in into the sales conversation, I would probably have pre-centered this video and said, hey, I went and did some research. Here's four or five videos that'll help you get booked on more podcasts, right? It's just taking a couple of minutes. Here's on how to get on a podcast uh, as a guest. This, this video is seven minutes. Seven, oh, it's all the same guy here. Okay, awesome. Uh, how to get on um, booked on podcasts. Here's another one. How to get booked on podcasts. Um, you know, the way to get booked on top podcasts, how, how this person did 50 interviews, uh, 50 interviews in six months. Well, to me, what I hear when I see this, this is exactly what she's trying to do, right? She, her goal was to get on 50 podcasts in 2022. Here's a guy that did this. Alex Berman did this in 50, 50 interviews in six months. That interview, um, oh, and this is EOF. Um, uh, this is, this would be a great resource for her up front. So I would probably take a few of these and I would actually put these in front of her over a few days before our meeting. Right. So that's one thing I would do. The second thing I would do is I would go right over my trusty resource guide Fiverr here. Right. And I would type in, um, podcast guest, podcast guest. Now, remember, I hear that she's $1,000 for each podcast um, that she's on, right? Um, well, here's research for a podcast for her to be on. I'll make a list of podcast shows you can be on. Um, I'll research podcasts, but I'll have you as a guest on my podcast for creatives. Boom, she's easy. This is exactly what I was looking for. Okay, now I did not look at this ahead of time, right? But I look at this and I go, here it is. I will have you as a guest on my podcast for creatives. It's uh, 50 bucks. Sounds like it's 50 bucks here. Here's the fine print, blah, 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 blah. I would look through, quite honestly, if she was a client and I was thinking she was going to come on as a pro account, I would actually buy and pay for this gig. And I would just book her on this guy's podcast for 50 bucks. And I'd walk in and go, look, before we even get started, I want to let you know that I've already booked you on a podcast. It's for creatives. Here's the style, blah, 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 blah. I've instantly put myself in the, the category of a full-blown resource um, for her before we've ever done anything, right? So let's just keep going and seeing if there's anything that we can, um, uh, we can get her on here. Lots of podcast guests for your podcast. Here's, here's another one. If she's a motivational speaker, I'll have you as a special guest on my podcast. For 50 bucks. Um, by the way, for those of you that have podcasts, I want you to just be recognizing here that you could actually put up a fiber gig and charge folks to come on and be a podcast guest for you. Could be a could be a, a valuable tool for you, right? Um, I was just gonna see. Uh, so this one is again, um, uh, this one is again 55 bucks. So around 50 bucks uh, for um, uh, to have be a guest. I will feed you. Okay, here's a great one. Now look, let's let's bring this up here. I will I will feature you as a guest on my podcast. Create engaging content. I'll provide you with a detailed list of potential awesome guests to host on your show. Blah 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 blah. Okay. For me, this is golden. How I would do this is I would attack this. I would send her a few videos on how to get her book. That one that's how to do fifty interviews in six months. Boom! It falls right in line with her goal. Second thing I would do, I just go get a book on a podcast. I'd reach out to my mailbox power community. I say, hey, who has a podcast? I have a person, she's really into landscaping or you know, fishing or whatever she's into, whatever the topic is, who has a podcast in this area? And I would try to get her a, a podcast. The reason my thinking is that I'm gonna ask her to invest 150 bucks a month. She says it's $1,000 every time she's on one of these shows easy thing for me to do is to bang out and get her on um, on one of these shows, right? Now, next, I would just use the trusty old Google machine. How uh, to, uh, let's just go podcast guests. I just go probably podcast guest directory. 
podcast, find great guests for your podcast uh, to help you find guests and get more guest appearances. Okay, so to me, I'm in, I'm in on this deal already, right? So podcastguest.com, I've never been to this site. Here are all these people that are featured on this show. I'm guessing they wanna be guests. Here's all the topics that they have, everything from LBGTPQ to environment to my area self, blah, 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 get listed. So this is how I look at it. I would go get experts, get booked. Let's see, I would probably send her this link and say, hey, let me help you get on as many podcasts as possible. Uh, but here we go. Look at this. Basic. You get a one sheet, your profile is listed, guest mobile friendly, your URL, podcast will contact you directly through your profile, link to a profile. In this case, guys, I would actually probably go shell out the 10 bucks create a podcast listing on her behalf as best I could, create the username and password, give her the username and password and say, hey, I went ahead and thought that through for you. Okay, that's just one tiny little thing that we could do. So does that make sense in terms of just thinking this, thinking this through? It's like, is it worth 50 bucks getting her on a podcast if she says that it's $1,000 in her pocket? For me, absolutely. You can see that you can go to Fiverr. You can probably, I used to be able to go and you used to be able, that's how I started being a guest on podcasts years and years and years ago. I was so terrible and bad. I stunk up the joint. So I went and paid people $5 to let them interview me on their stupid podcast, right? I mean, they're amazing, fantastic shows that they were doing that they allowed me to stink up the joint on, right? So yeah, Bill. I used one of those Fiverrs and I was on 28, because you told us to do this like in March. And I did, I went to Fiverr and I hired somebody that made a sheet. He booked me on 28 podcasts. I did 28 podcasts. I did 28. I got booked on about 35 and a few got canceled. But I did 28 podcasts in the last 60 days, 90 days. Boom. So Bill could be our mystery woman from this morning, right? In my role in real estate, I was in a niche. It was, it'd be easier to go maybe a little wider. I was in the, I wanted to be only on podcasts or real estate related. Absolutely. So now think about this. So now if Bill is now an executive member of Mailbox Power, then we could go right in and show him again how to use Mailbox Power on using this morning's brain trust on how to actually get him to do that. So you guys see kind of just, I just wanted to bring up a different point of view, a different shift in sometimes I think one of the things that happens is we kind of go out the shotgun approach and we go to our BNI chapters or we go to our chambers and we just kind of shotgun it. Whereas if I can go Look, Bill, let me show you how, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to get booked on podcasts. Okay, well, let me help you. To me, easy win of getting Bill Growth booked on a, a podcast, right? Literally, here's the thing, guys. You go pretty much pay somebody 10 bucks on Fiverr and book yourself, frankly, or somebody else as a podcast guest. Now, I will share with you, um, Fiverr and Etsy, are amazing places to find things that will help you and allow you to be considered a resource for someone versus a sales rep. So let's go back to our, our gal from this morning. Can you see the difference of what it looks like if you walked in and said, let's say her name is Laura, because I'm looking right at Laura here, right? Um, Laura, hey, I know that we're gonna talk about how to use this system to grow your podcast interview portfolio, but I hope it's okay with you. I know that in our previous conversation, you had kind of shared this between $500 and $1,000 of revenue to your business, everyone. So I just did a little research. I found these two videos that I think will really be helpful. I want to send them to you. You're going to go ahead and watch them. I'll take you about a half hour, put them on double speed to cut the time in half. And I also um, just took the liberty of kind of going and doing a little bit of research. I found this podcasting site where you could actually get your profile up there and actually have podcasters to contact you. It was only a, a few bucks to set up a profile. So I hope it's okay, Laura. What I did was I actually paid for a first month and went in and set it up. It's probably terrible. I probably don't have all the information right, but at least give you a username and password. Go try it for a month. If it's cool, stick with it. And it's your deal. I just want to help you get on the, I want to help you achieve this goal. And lastly, Laura, even before we start talking about Mailbox Power, I want to just let you know that uh, I kind of pulled some strings and did my work in the background and uh, I've booked you already on a podcast. So um, here's the information, here's the assistant, here's who you need to contact, but they're already waiting for you um, in the wings. You just need to give them a date of when you're ready to go. Right? Now look at how that looks versus 
sitting down and just hammering them on everything that mailbox power can do. Does that make sense, you guys? So when we look at how we can be a resource for someone, trying to be a resource and putting a few extra minutes up ahead of time can pay off hugely on the back end, right? So in this particular case, you have to operate your mailbox power business. Like there are other people talking to the same person about mailbox power, about Shutterfly, about some of our other competitors. We're in a race. We're in a competition and a race. And I think if we can position ourselves as resources, we have a much higher rate of people saying, oh my gosh, I totally want to work with you. Right, so let's open it up. What do you guys think? I'm just seeing some heads nod. Oh, I can I can start calling on people. I can see people's names, and I'll just I, I'll look for you that are looking down and off to the side, and you're gonna run away and turn your cameras off, like I'm not gonna find you. Yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say I think that's great, and um, I'm mad that I didn't think of Fiverr because I was just on it and hired a gig this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Um, I, a lot of times will recommend that people take a few minutes a week, put your cell phone on a timer, put your wallet away and, uh, go and just explore on Fiverr. There are so many things that, that you can do on, on Fiverr. Um, putting your wallet away is a good, it is a, is a good one because my, that I get, I get carried away on Fiverr and before Fiverr you know like it, Costco. You think you're going in to buy one, you know, roll of toilet paper and you come out spending a hundred, like you can't go into Costco and come out under a hundred bucks, right? But think about all the different things that could be purchased and help somebody out. Is it worth $5 to go in and help somebody by being a resource before you walk into a sales conversation? It's, there's not a lot you can't find on Fiverr. Yeah, Sandy. So a thought in my head. I have somebody in my BNI chapter that has a very unique business. And my thought is I could go and she has seen I've demoed mailbox power, but I like the idea of going back for a follow up. What's her, have what's it coming her business? From a point, what's her business? Yeah. She, um, uh, she's a resource for everything pet related. And she also teaches CPR classes to people either in an office or individually. Okay, so let's take the pet the pet business. So I just thought it was unique. So what is what is let's 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 help this lady out. Is she a mailbox power user yet? No, not yet. Oh, great. She's going to be right now. We're going to help her. <laughs> what um what tell us a little bit more about her business. Uh she I met her in 2009 and she was starting out with uh uh Pet Lane. Pet Lane went away and became Paw Tree. And uh, she has developed her skills and got into the health and wellness as a whole for all things related to animals. And people, you know, we recommend her. People look her up. She goes to real estate offices. She goes to lenders offices. She goes to all kinds of different things and does these all day CPR classes to teach people how, what to do in case of emergency. Okay, so are there two businesses here or is she teaching people to do it? It's one CPR? business. It's She actually has one business, but she has made herself valuable. I see her as a valuable resource. Okay, so how do we help her? How do we help position you to be a resource to her? Well, could I go in and, I mean, I don't know her goal like you know this lady from this morning. So, well, uh, say, but I mean, our big goal is to replace her job in Seattle with... Right. So we know that Pawtree is a network marketing company, right? Right. So, yes. okay. So maybe even if it's just as simple as going and buying Eric Worre's seven steps, uh, Eric Worre's Go Pro book on how to be the better, best network marketer. Imagine if you walked in, what's her, what's her first name? Sally Sue? Annette. Annette. So you walk in and you go, where'd he go? Well, I'm right here. You walk oh. in and you leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. but imagine, but imagine you, that. <laughs> imagine Sandy, you walk into your next BNI chapter and you walk right up to Annette and you go, Annette, you know what? I've really been thinking about your pottery business and your CPR business. And I want to be a resource to help you get out of this job in Seattle. 
So I went and I bought two books for you. Number one is a book called GoPro by Eric Worre, and it really outlines the seven steps to becoming a network marketing professional so we can get you out of this stupid job, right? And the other thing is I just know based on your CPR business that that's a word of mouth referrals business. So I also went and I bought you a copy of Get More Referrals Now. And it's just a great book. I thought it was really great. And by the way, Annette, I went through here and I just kind of highlighted and dog-eared some pages I thought would be really relevant for you in both of those businesses. That was smart. No. I sent her a book last year, but I didn't, well, I, we haven't been in person, you know what I mean, for a, quite a while. Yeah. Now, here's the, here's the best part about these two books. I'll bet you bottoms to dollars or dollars to bottoms, or I don't even know what even that means. And now that I just said it, it actually kind of scary. <laughs> Um, I'll bet you I could go on eBay and probably buy these, each of these books for a dollar, right? So you don't even have to go buy them in full-blown Amazon, but, but imagine just the, the difference of how you are positioned, Sandy. If you walked into your BNI chapter, slapped these two books in front of her and said, I want to be a resource to help you get out of this job in Seattle. Are you going to allow me to help you? Gotcha. Okay, so Debbie, I'm going to let you go. I have to go sign for a FedEx package. So you have the floor for 30 seconds. Okay, so Sandy, you know what I was going to say is I would at your next um, meeting, BNI meeting, set up a one to one with her and um, tell her to bring with her 15 tips for pet owners that have to do with you know, safety or any of those types of things, and then go in and create a 12 touch postcard campaign and tell her when she signs up, you've already done all the work. She gave you the information and you created the, the drip campaign and she just needs to start sending it out to all her clients. And, um, each one of those postcards should feature a specific product that is somehow related to whatever she's teaching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's dental health and they have pet toothbrushes and, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. I love that. So it wouldn't I, help to get her on podcasts. It might, if she wants to be on podcasts. Right? Oh, I have to ask her first. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to find out as much as I can before something like a podcast, you know, somebody may not be comfortable in being on a podcast. So that might be a little bit further. Giving them a book at least starts the conversation. Oh, gotcha. Or, or if she's with Pawtree, um, I might go on Facebook and see if I could find a couple of uh, pet related Facebook groups and be able to say, hey, I found these couple of groups. I don't know if you're a member of them, but you should give them a check. You should try it. I should do that because she's doing that for me. And you know what else you could do on Fiverr? I've actually hired somebody to to create um, social media posts um, about different like health and wellness stuff. So go hire somebody to create some pet things, and then you don't even have to have her tell you about it. You can provide them to her. You know they'll get you a hundred pet posts for um, you know five bucks or ten bucks or something. Okay, I see. I was just seeing if I could find, what are those called? Meme, pet social media memes. Okay, here you go, Sandy, for $5, this person will create five copyright free pet compilation videos that you could give to her and tell her to go post up on YouTube with a link. Gotcha. Here you could go for 10 bucks and get somebody to design a medium post and a graphic content. Um, well, that's a cryptocurrency thing. Da, da, da. Uh, let's see. I want to find. Okay. Here's a, this is a perfect one. Sandy, this is perfect. This goes right into what Debbie was saying. This person will create a thousand. Now I want you guys to hear what I'm about to say. This person will create a thousand dog funny memes for Instagram for $10. Do you guys recognize that that is less than a penny a piece that this person will create a, an Instagram page? Now, Sandy, I ask you, what happens when you walk into a net and then when you go around the BNI chapter and you give up your testimony, you say, you know what? I've been thinking a lot about a net and what she does. 
And I know that we as a goal, have a goal here, get her out of her crappy job in Seattle. And so, and that what I want to do is I want to just gift you a thousand Instagram posts that I had made for you just to help you launch this pottery business. Cool. Mouths drop, mics drop, call you a potato because you are done. It's, it's done. done. It's done then. Great ideas. It's $10. Yeah. Right? I mean, um, uh, let's see. And I'm betting, Sandy, that you could turn a lot of those into the postcard um, drip campaign things too. Um, something funny on the front is going to get them to look at what's on the back. So, no kidding. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's even say let's even say she has a TikTok video. Check check this out. Let's just say she's got a TikTok video. For those of you that are on your your TikTok, like I am. You want to see how much stuff is available for us to be having done on TikTok. Let's look at Peck TikTok. Let's say Annette has a TikTok channel or she has a YouTube channel. Um, for $5, here's a funny pet compilation, funny copyright pet compilation video, copyright $5. I'll create a monetized funny pet short videos for YouTube and TikTok. I'll create animal pet compilation for $5. I'll do animal pet compilation videos for your TikTok channel for $5. Think of the difference, gang, when we walk in, we walk in and we go, bam, Annette, look at what I did. You know, I just got thinking about you, Annette, and I know that you were on the hesitation of maybe even thinking about using mailbox power, but I just wanted to, in the spirit of giver's gain, here's what I did. I went out and I had a thousand Instagram posts created for you and two TikTok videos created for you. And oh, by the way, I got you a guest post on a pet blog. So happy holidays. That would be a really neat uh, Christmas present. You're you're into that like fifteen dollars, yeah. right? But do you understand that if she signs up as a pro account, you make nineteen dollars. So is it worth basically only making four dollars your first month? Oh, absolutely. It, yeah, it's yeah, it's irrelevant. Yeah, just uh, yeah, it's the longest. Her and I just happen to be in the same chapter. Mm -hmm. She's the person I've known the longest. And um, so here's so here's what I'm going to offer you, Sandy, and and I'm going to say this to all of us. I might get a little I might get a little close to the to the line. I'm going to need my hand slapped a little bit, right? But Sandy, here's the deal. You said you've known this lady since 2009. Yes. Right. Do you recognize that's almost a 15 year mortgage that you've known this lady? Really? No. Well, 2009 to 2019 is 10. Yeah. 11, 12, 13. 13. So 13 going on 14 years. It's 15 years to pay off a mortgage, 15 year mortgage. So the question is, if she's not using mailbox power yet, why? For all of us, this is not just directed at Sandy, but but listen, if if we know somebody that we've been in a business networking event for 15 years and they're not using a $50 a month program that's gonna help them in the business that they're actually in the networking group for, I argue that we haven't proven we're a resource. We are seen as a sales mm -hmm. rep. And if we can flip that on its head and become a resource to folks, it becomes golden. Good point. Then they might not even say it, but they might be thinking it. I, so I think it's very subconscious. Mm. I think it's very subconscious. Now, check this out. Let's even go. So let's even take this a half step further. So you're in your BNI chapter. Sandy, how many members do you have in your BNI chapter? Uh, 22. 22. So imagine if we spent an average of $10 a week on a couple of Fiverr things, and we highlighted one person a week and gave them something cool in that BNI chapter. And we did that every week for 22 weeks and we spent $10 to be able to do that and highlight an additional person in that chapter. Do we not just completely reposition ourselves as somebody that you must be doing business with? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay, my meeting is tomorrow. I got to get, get on Fiverr and figure out a gig. <laughs> but I mean, let's, I mean, but let's think, I mean, let's think about this. If, if we can position ourselves, especially 
whether it's eWomen or Polkadot or BNI or Latip or Team or Chambers or, or Kiwanis or wherever you, you network, the power that you will um, attract by being proactive in this game is, is immensely powerful. And we just did those cursory searches. That was like, that wasn't even with any, that was a two second search. I mean, yeah, Dan from Toronto. So if you think about it, when you're going to hire someone or you're going to use a product or service, one of the big questions is, do they understand my company and me? And do they understand what it is I'm trying to do? What, what my goals are, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to. When you do all that from the beginning, before you walk in, you just preempted that whole doubt line. And if anything, you've positioned yourself at a much higher level of, this, of initial discussion with someone because we don't have to have the discussion of, do you understand, do you get me, do you get my company? That's all done because you've just shown it. And you've also shown a little investment towards me at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely. I just think of the power of I'm going into a BNC, I'm sitting Absolutely. down, all of a sudden some Yahoo stands up and says, hey, Casey, I just went and had a thousand Instagram posts for you created. And you're sitting here yammering on about TikTok. So by the way, I went and I had three TikTok videos about your business created for you that you can just slap up there and use. Is the conversation really about a 14 day trial or a pro account at this point? No. Out of just sheer dumb law of reciprocity, I think they're going to sign up. Just sheer, just sheer brute law of reciprocity. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else have anything they want to add? This went longer than I thought, but I hope we helped Annette get out of her stupid job in Seattle. I know she loves her job, but I know that she's been there a long time and would like to trade. We've had a couple of conversations. So, so let's help she... her do that. That's yeah. what we have to focus on. People will tell you how to sell them if you listen. Right? So anybody else want to open, anybody else want to, to fill in any gaps in here? Any other thoughts or ideas? Yeah, Debbie. I just really want to say thank you for bringing up the podcasting. I know I kind of threw it out there for a second last week and it's come up a lot and I'm a big podcaster and um, I just, I love having the conversations about that. I'm not that mystery woman, but I think that it does open up a lot of doors for a lot of people. And I love having the conversation around it. Awesome. Awesome. Were you on this morning's call, Debbie? I haven't, no, I, yeah. I'm still yeah. really busy from insurance, but um, that, I'm waiting for you to post it. I cannot wait. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. I will do it as soon as we're done here. Okay. Okay. Can I ask Debbie what, what time her B&I meets tomorrow? 1130. Are you Pacific time too? No, we're a mountain. Oh, that's just one hour over. I think there's two, aren't you? Are you one? One. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You guys, great call tonight. I hope this really kind of spark kind of proactive thinking and repositioning ourselves as resources for folks. So with that, you guys have an amazing day. By the way, you could use Fiverr for your own business, right? I mean, you know, um, anywho. Okay, with that, you guys have an amazing, amazing rest of your evening. I won't see you until next Monday. It will be past uh, the holidays. So whether you celebrate Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, nothing uh the solstice uh, i want to wish you a very happy end of the year uh in whatever you and your family are doing all i ask is one small simple favor uh buckle up and if you're going to go out and enjoy uh adult libations please please download the uber app um and uh it it just ain't worth it so with that you guys i love you all and i will see you uh next week ciao for bye, now casey. Bye, casey bye everybody happy holidays. Bye, guys. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Yay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Safe travels, Casey. Thank you. Bye, guys.